live from Orlando, Florida. It's the Cube covering Enterprise Connect 2019. Brought to you by Five Nine. Hi, welcome to the Cube. Lisa Martin from Orlando. Lots going on on the Cube set. Obviously, as you can just tell, I'm with Stu Miniman. We are at Enterprise Connect. 2019 for day two, you can hear all the buzz in the expo hall behind me. 140 vendors exhibiting new products and services. We're joined by ServiceNow, Venki Subramanian, Head of Product Management and Customer Service. Venki, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. So, ServiceNow, give us a little bit of uh, info about your role and some of the announcements that have come out from this week. Oh, absolutely, yeah. So, ServiceNow, I think uh, all of your family would say, one of the leading cloud software vendors. Um, our sole purpose is digitizing workflows in the cloud, and uh, we do that for various different uh, parts of an enterprise like the IT workflow, employee experience, and customers. My role in ServiceNow is I lead the product management for one of our product, uh, one of the business units, which is customer service management, that is focused on providing companies with uh, the tools and technologies required for them to provide a great customer experience for their end customers. So in that role, um, my, I'm responsible for defining the product vision, the roadmap, and working with our engineering teams to release the product and capabilities that our customers love to use. Yeah. Yep. So, so Venki, we, we've heard in the keynote this morning, we heard ServiceNow come up. Tell us a little bit about, uh, at the show, some of the partnerships you're working with, uh, and you know, it's a pretty diverse spectrum of activities going on, so where ServiceNow has important plays. Absolutely, so ServiceNow, like I mentioned, plays in multiple different areas and, and helps enterprise deliver great employee and customer experiences. So in that sense, this is a very appropriate show for us to be at, where we are connecting uh, different parts of the organization to collaborate and to deliver great experiences and deliver outcomes for employees and customers. Uh, we have several of our partners, including you know, Five9 right here, and uh, you know, we partner on various different areas, like collaboration is a key area of focus for us, and you heard us mention in the Microsoft keynote earlier today, we partner with them on uh, integrating their teams and other products with our product portfolio. Um, Five9 actually serves a different part, different uh, purpose for us, where they enable uh, contact centers uh, to operate optimally, and they connect that with our customer service management, which actually co combines both the customer engagement aspects and the customer service and the customer workflow aspects that we provide. Let's dig into that a little bit more, Menke, because the last day or so, Stu and I have been talking a lot about the customer experience. Mm -hmm. It's table stakes right. for any business, because as consumers, we're, we're so empowered, we can churn easily, there's always another provider that's going to be able to deliver something, and if we're unhappy, we have that opportunity Absolutely. easily. So, CX is table stakes. Talk to us about why companies should make customer service part of those table stakes. Oh, absolutely, yeah. So if you look at the evolution of you know, how customer service has evolved over several years, it started off as a key component of customer relationship management softwares, right? And customer relationships started with managing the customer records, the customer data, so that the companies can make sense of who their customers are and how to sell them, serve them optimally. The second stage of evolution uh, added uh, several engagement capabilities and the customer experience layer on top. So how do we make sense of all of this data and intelligence that we're collecting about customers to provide contextual, personalized experience to those end customers? But customer service is not just about engagement and experience, right? Ultimately, customers are looking for outcomes. They want their services to be delivered uninterrupted for them and things like that, and that is where we are looking at the third stage of evolution, if you will, uh, where we are connecting that customer engagement and the customer experience layer with different parts of the organization that needs to work together on a single platform to be able to deliver effortless customer experiences and deliver to the results and the outcomes that your customers come to expect. Yeah, thank you, I wonder if you could drill down a little bit. Do you have a customer example you can share of that or you know, just some specifics to understand as to how we're cutting across silos, helping to have the, the, the business act as a whole to improve that customer experience? Absolutely, absolutely. I can mention a couple of names. I mean, we. Uh, drink our own champagne, so we are our customer as well. ServiceNow uses our own software, our solutions to actually deliver customer service and customer experiences. Uh, one of the other customers, a reference customer for us is Nice. Uh, I believe they're probably at this show as well. And if you look at what they have done, they have been able to connect their, uh, the cloud data center operations, the product organization, the product engineering and R&D organization, and customer service on a single platform so that when customers report issues, 
they're able to reduce the effort for customers with great self-service experience that are contextualized and personalized. They're able to identify issues and drive all the way to root cause the resolution and then provide that information back to customers so that it's not just about answering questions faster, it's about reducing call volumes. It's about eliminating the root cause of the issue so that the next customer does not face that and then have to call you again. So in terms of that integration, it's critical, right, for all of the key constituents interacting with the customer to have the data, the right time, to be able to make the right, be empowered mm -hmm. to make the right decision, but that integration is challenging. Can you oh, give yeah. us an example of maybe a, an old guard company that has to transform to stay relevant and to be competitive? How do they undergo that, those process, and maybe it's more of a cultural change right. to facilitate that integration so ultimately, they can deliver that personalized customer experience that you were saying that more and more we demand as consumers. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, there are, there are many examples, but I mean, most of it actually starts with the realization that we need to transform, right? And with more and more services or products getting uh, enabled through technology and technology-powered services, that is not an option for companies anymore. So it really starts with the realization. It starts with driving the change top down. A lot of it is really driving the change management throughout the organization. Um, it involves identifying your customer journeys, mapping them out and identifying you know, what are the touch points. It also is a huge challenge for many customer service executives in a lot of those companies where they still are in that traditional mode of operation where they find it difficult to hold the other parts of the organization responsible, right? Customer service is not an island. Customer service is not just a responsibility of a single department within the company. It is a thinking that needs to, it's a mindset that needs to actually get you know, percolated down to every part of the organization. So really for me, that is where it starts and that is where I think uh, the organizations start to transform. And then it's about you know, uh, deploying the right tools and technologies to really make it happen. So, Venki, a couple of themes that we've been digging into at this show is how cloud and AI are transforming a lot of the spaces. Uh, I don't think we even need to talk about the cloud piece when it comes to service right. now, because that, that, that's a given. But from an AI standpoint, where, where does AI and ML uh, fit, fit into the solutions that, that you're building to that, That's a great today? question, and yeah. you know, we cannot have a conversation about customer service or enterprise collaboration without mentioning AI there. So, uh, if you go back to what I said a little earlier about you know, the, the third phase of evolution where we are now able to connect the different parts of the company, different parts of the, the processes on a single platform. A lot of that actually uh, ends up providing a lot of insights, right, a lot of data. You need to convert those data into insights and that is really where AI comes in. And then you need to be able to surface those insights at the right points of consumption to be able to eliminate the repetitive mundane tasks and to provide value added capabilities for agents and for customers. Because nobody wants to waste their time doing the same thing over and over again, right? If you talk to a customer service agent, what they really feel excited about is the ability to serve the customers, not being able to write down you know, tons of notes and capturing all the interaction details. So that's something that they have to do. So if we can help them with those aspects, with AI, with automation, with intelligence, that is what makes them more productive. And ultimately that results in a direct you know, impact on customer experience positively. So when you're out in the field talking with customers, as I imagine as the head of product management you are, where do you find ServiceNow coming in and kind of educating the customers on the opportunities and the um, enablers that AI can deliver to them? Are they still sort of on the fence about this or where are you from a, maybe a consultative perspective? Right, right. No, I think we are past that phase where people are kind of questioning the relevance of AI. We are, I think, way past that stage. Everybody understands the value that it delivers uh, in different points, at different points of consumption for different people. Um, I think we are at the stage where people are now trying to understand how fast they can move with this, how they can apply this, how they can adopt these technologies within. And this is where ServiceNow is trying to really be a, a, an enabler in that process, right? So we don't want an AI adoption, an AI initiative within a company to be a science project. We don't want it to be you know, in somewhere, somewhere in the back office with a, you know, a you know, number of you know, geeks, scientists, and all that. We really want to bring it to the forefront. And the way we are doing that is by embedding AI capabilities directly into the experience and also by productizing a lot of those AI-based solutions so that our customers don't have to start from the very basics. So we are not asking our customers to go and define their own data sets and you know, bring a number of data scientists to identify features and things like that. What we are saying is, we have already done that heavy lifting for our customers. We have identified key scenarios that we can enable that can be powered with AI. We're productizing that, we're building that into our product directly and we bring those innovations into the market. So 
if, if you, just one more point, I mean, uh, just earlier this month, March 6th, actually we announced our latest version of our uh, product uh, that we released to in market. It's called the Madrid release. And Madrid release, if you go and look at it, it's packed with a lot of those innovations. For example, customer service, we are able to identify when a customer service agent is working on a case, uh, we are able to identify similar issues that other people might have already reported. Some things that might be already resolved and the agents can quickly use that information and resolve this particular case that they're working on. Or being able to identify an issue that might be impacting major, you know, multiple customers. Yeah, I wonder if you could give us a little bit of insight as to just the changing role of the agents and some of the stressors and strains on them. There's some concern, it's like, okay, wait, do your customers look at automation as something that will displace agents, make their lives better, and you know, how much do they worry about the, that agent, agent retention and how happy their agents are? Right, I think that's a huge priority for most customer service organizations. Um, I would say it should be a priority for all customer service organizations. And the reason is very simple, right? A lot of the simple, easy um, uh, capabilities are offered through self-service. As a customer, I'm sure we don't want to, our first pro, you know, option will not be to pick up a phone and call and talk to an agent. That'll be probably a few steps down the line. Uh, and that experience should definitely be uh, enabled and should be easy, but when issues show up at the agent's desk, they are much more complex than what it used to be. And the expectation is that, you know, I don't want to be handed over to somebody else. The last thing I want to hear is, oh wait, let me hand you to an expert, right? So that's where these agents need to be upskilled. They need to be uh, empowered with tools and technology that uh, I think the, the term that we hear used in the industry is they need to be super agents, right? They're not the, the people who sit and answer a call and then pass it on to an expert, but they are the people who can actually take a call and resolve the issue all at that, the same point, at the, the first time engagement. Yeah, and it, if I understand it, it's, it's, it's some of the solutions and products that you're helping to build that take that agent and give them their superpowers. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, that's our goal. So we have interfaces that we actually design and build specifically for that persona, and we augment several of those experiences with applications of AI and technology. And we also leverage a lot of partnerships in that process. For example, the ability for an agent to seamlessly look at the call coming in, to be able to identify who that customer is, what is the issue they might be calling about, previous interactions I've seen, all of that stuff in a single pane of glass, and that you know, optimized experience, that's a priority for us. That is something that we bake into our products. And how is it that, that agents want to be trained these days? And one of the gentlemen in the customer panel this morning was talking about, I think from Continental AG, that they identified about 20 different ways that internal users, whether they're agents or not, want to be trained. If it's send me an email, shoot me a video, send me a YouTube link. What are you guys finding as you're looking at these different personas? Any sort of um, you know, top five training mechanisms boiling up to the top that you are going to be consistently delivering? I mean, training and upskilling is, is, a, is a huge priority because if, I, if we just look at, you know, how do we make an agent a super agent, right? They need to be provided with the right kind of trainings and upskilling opportunities. Uh, there are various different ways. I mean, I'm not uh, probably an expert on the training me methodologies itself, but one thing that we can all realize is it has to be relevant, it has to be provided at the point of consumption, and it also should be something that is captured back so that that learning or the, 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 uh, the knowledge that gets created in the process of researching and resolving an issue, it gets institutionalized, get actually put back into a system that is leveraged by everyone else in the organization. So those are capabilities that I think should be important for everyone. Last question for you as we're here at Enterprise Connect. What are some of the exciting things that people can see and feel in touch with ServiceNow at this event? At this event? So first I would say we have a booth. Uh, we are showing our product demonstrations and you can talk to several of our experts who are here at the, um, at the event. Um, I have a small speaking assignment later, later today, so I have a session that I will be talking at. Uh, what you will actually see is some of our latest innovations that we are bringing to the market with the, late, with the new release. So you will see how we can expand or extend the customer self-service to not just web, but also to mobile. We are releasing net new mobile capabilities for agents, uh, which can also be extended out to your customers. You will see a brand new agent interface that I just talked about and how we are packaging some of the agent intelligence machine learning capabilities into that. And you will also see a lot of our powerful workflow platform and uh, you know, how you can apply that for op orchestrating and optimizing processes. Wow, a lot to learn. A lot, yeah. a lot of knowledge to be gleaned. Thank you, thank you so much for joining thank Stu you. and me on theCUBE this afternoon. We appreciate your time. Thank you, it's a pleasure talking to you. For Stu Miniman, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE.